public hearing on 470 and call Ian Freeman. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, one of the ambassadors at the uh, Bitcoin Embassy that's located in New Hampshire. It's actually located in Keene, the first one uh, in North America, in the New England area of North America. There's another Bitcoin Embassy in Atlanta. And there are other Bitcoin embassies elsewhere in the world. Um, I wanted to address a couple of things that were brought up here, and I'll try to keep it short. Um, the, one of the reasons why somebody might want to pay with Bitcoin uh, to, as far as state taxes are concerned. A lot of state agencies will accept credit cards um, for convenience sake, right? Because somebody just, maybe they don't want to write a check or for whatever reason they want to put it on their card. Usually the state agency will then add in a 3% fee uh, on top of a credit card transaction because usually that's about what uh, the credit card company is going to charge is the 3%. So they add that on top of whatever the taxable amount is they're collecting. And so 1% is a lot better than 3%. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people want to pay with cryptocurrency in a variety of different areas, not just to the state, but uh, elsewhere. And so that's a big deal. Also, New Hampshire, as was mentioned earlier, does have very high interest, as far as the people of New Hampshire, in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin specifically. Uh, there was a company called Overstock. Some of you probably have heard of them. They were the first billion dollar company to begin accepting Bitcoin. And this was, I think, maybe four or five years ago now. Um, that company, when they started accepting Bitcoin, the CEO there, the founder, is very interested in uh, Bitcoin. And he started to study the usage of cryptocurrency by their customers. Who's using this, you know, this thing to pay with? And it actually turned out that New Hampshire had the highest per capita use as far as the customers at Overstock.com. I don't remember what year that was for, but I do remember seeing the, the chart and the details on that. So there's a high interest in uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin here in New Hampshire. And you can actually see this for yourself by going to a website that shows a map where you can see a lot of New Hampshire businesses that have started accepting Bitcoin at their point of sale. So um, I live in Keene. Keene is one of the hot spots. Portsmouth and Keene are two of the probably most um, you know, biggest areas in New Hampshire where real mom and pop local businesses are accepting Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to go to a dentist next month that is, accepts Bitcoin in Keene. Uh, there's an auto repair shop that I take my car to that takes cryptocurrency. Um, there's multiple <coughs> sit-down and food truck style restaurants in Keene that accept cryptocurrency. There's a bar uh, that takes cryptocurrency. And that's just in Keene. There's a bunch more out in Portsmouth. There's some in Manchester. I think there's maybe one or two here in, here in Concord. But I would like to invite you to you know, jot this one down, coinmap.org. The website is coinmap, C-O-I-N-M-A-P, coinmap.org. It just shows you, the, it shows you the whole globe, actually. Let me zoom right in on New Hampshire, and you'll be able to kind of get a, a feel for what businesses are accepting it. They're all mom and pops. There's no you know, mega corporate chains that are, that are doing it yet. But as was mentioned, some of these uh, Microsofts and uh, you know, Wikipedia, these mega companies on the internet are definitely taking uh, Bitcoin in real life. So it's, it's big here in New Hampshire. Um, Jeremy testified earlier about his company moving here and, and basing here in New Hampshire. And this isn't the only one. There was that good news that came out a couple of years ago when uh, New Hampshire, I think it was 2017 or 2016. Anyway, they passed a bill that kind of deregulated uh, Bitcoin from the money transmitter regulations here. It basically said that if you are running a business and you just do Bitcoin to other cryptocurrency trades, not Bitcoin to dollars, but you can exchange Bitcoin to the other ones. There's a bunch of competitors to Bitcoin. Um, but that wouldn't be considered money transmission. And there were some businesses that saw that news. They saw the headlines in the Bitcoin trades, and they actually came here. And I'll just tell you about one of them. Uh, it's called AnyPay. It's based in Portsmouth. So if you were to go to one of these businesses in Keene or Portsmouth and accept cryptocurrency, the way they're accepting it is through this company, AnyPay. And it's a point of sale software that allows a, uh, you know, the, the cashier to type in the amount of the sale, and then they can collect that very easily from their customer. That software that was developed here in New Hampshire by a brand new company, and the founder of that company said it was the Bitcoin news about New Hampshire that he saw that made him want to found this company and run it from Portsmouth. So there's definitely some companies we can point to that exist here in New Hampshire now 
uh, that may not have existed at all if it weren't for New Hampshire's friendliness to Bitcoin. And so this bill takes that to the next step. It takes that to the next level. It will be great press, great publicity for operating a business here in New Hampshire, and I fully support it. So happy to answer any questions, like I said, I'm with the Bitcoin Embassy, so I know a thing or two about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, so you probably heard my, my concerns and my questions about, you know, we're selecting the processor and that the assumed risk is on the processor and the payer of the taxes. If there was, you know, I'm just thinking, if would it be viable if on the website we have that little link, pay by Bitcoin, say if there was a screen or something that was able to just alleviate that and rather than just being an implied risk, say, I accept that this processor is chosen by the state and absent any... Yeah, yeah if that we agree to something goes right wrong, there. I'll still be, you know, responsible. You could totally yeah, put that in the agreement. Yeah, if just one screen, they could just check off and sure. electronically sign before they pay it. Yep, totally yeah. easy. When we look at the banking industry, which I think is probably part of the assets, <coughs> there's a process the bank has to go through to be verified to become a bank. And they get regulated by and overseen by the U.S. government. What's the process in the currency for establishing one in who oversees? The marketplace oversees cryptocurrency through competition. Um, anybody can go out and create a cryptocurrency. In fact, uh, we just celebrated the 10th anniversary of Bitcoin just a few weeks ago. And we don't even know who its creator was. Uh, his or her name is Satoshi Nakamoto. It's not their real name. Um, and since then, that person has disappeared from any kind of uh, public view. But the key is, what Satoshi did was created software that's what they call open source. And for those who may or may not be familiar, open source means you can read the code. So I'm not a programmer. I wouldn't know what I was looking at. But you know, there's some people who obviously do know what they're doing when it comes to programming. And they have vetted this code for years. It is clearly, there's no back doors. There's no you know, scanning things going on. It's not hackable. It's cryptographically secure. And we know this because there's a great you know, monetary reward, if you could hack Bitcoin, I mean, it would be an incredible windfall of profits. <laughs> and it just hasn't happened because it can't be done. It's, uh, the math is very, very secure and it's very, very sound. So basically, it's being audited constantly um, by the community, essentially. It's sort of a crowdsourced regulation, if you will. If there was something wrong with it, then they could just move to one of its competitors. And there are thousands of competitors to Bitcoin. And the reason why they exist is because they took that Bitcoin code, which is open, and they tweaked things about it. And they said, well, we think this is better, and we're going to market this other competing currency. Now, no one has ever unseated Bitcoin from you know, the top of the heap. And we don't see that happening, I don't think, anytime soon. Mm -hmm.